Well, I think, first of all, why would you want it any other way? You know, I, I want to compete at the highest level. You know, so I think, first of all, uh, when you talk about John Elway, as I mentioned earlier, I'm, you talk about Peyton Manning. Uh, I, I got to go to Peyton Manning camp a long time ago. I was, I don't know, I was in 10th grade. I was in, in Louisiana, and, I, and he was my quarterback coach, him and Eli. And I was able to, you know, I was able to learn from, from one of the greatest quarterbacks of all time and be around him and, and how he talked about ball and how he saw the game. I, you know, um, you know, how he taught me how to do certain things and this and that. So I, I was always passionate about watching around him. I was, I'd been around him. I, I came here right before. I'm not sure if you guys know this, but um, I saw a couple of friendly faces that I've met before along the way. But, you know, 10, 11 years ago, right before the draft, I came here. Actually, it was my last visit. And the Denver Broncos had just traded, actually, for Peyton Manning. And uh, I came into the locker room, and there was one guy in the locker room, one person. It was Peyton Manning, and he was in his playbook, looking at his playbook, highlighting. And I walked up to him about halfway before I got to him. He kind of stood up and, hey, don't I know you from somewhere? <laughs> Started laughing and, and uh, he shook my hand. He said, Russell, man, I, I remember coaching from way back then. And, and so I, those kind of memories, you know, it, it's, it's an honor. It's a tradition. It's, it's, a, it's a place of excellence. And I think that's, that's the standard that I, that I have to bring every day. That's the only thing I know. Um, so that part uh, I'm looking forward to. I'm looking forward to picking, uh, you know, John Elway's, you know, brain about the history of the game, how he saw the game, Peyton too, the same way when I get a chance. And, and that, that's important to me, to, to be part of the history of the game. Um, and then in terms of the AFC West, um, you know, I want to play against the best. I don't fear anything. So I'm looking forward to it. The Denver Broncos are hoping that dipping into the veteran quarterback market once again, will garner the same results and outcome it did during Super Bowl 50 when they added another illustrious title to their storied history. They're hoping that Russell Wilson can cook them up a Mile High Championship and rekindle the good times in their championship culture. As for Wilson himself, he's hoping that a career reset in the Rockies will once again lead him to championship glory. Now the question becomes, can the two sides find a way to make this marriage end in a storybook? ending. To get some perspective on the matter, I enlisted the assistant of Derwin World. He's a weekend sports reporter for KREX, CBS 5 in Grand Junction, Colorado. He provided some insightful tidbits on whether Wilson can make the next chapter of his career a championship moment. I'm Kevin McShane. Let's have this conversation. a moment to welcome you to the program and I'm super excited to talk to you more about, uh, a little bit about some Denver Broncos football. Great to uh, see you this afternoon and thank you so very much for being here, buddy. Well, thank you for having me. Yeah, absolutely. And certainly, uh, you know, the Broncos stole some of the headlines this offseason when they signed Russell Wilson. So tell me, what was your initial reaction when you heard the news, buddy? Well, my reaction is probably going to be different from what you thought it would be, <laughs> or most. I was ecstatic that um, that he was leaving Seattle. Um, and the reason why I was happy is because I happened to be a Seahawks fan. Okay. So I kind of I wanted them to, I had wanted them to move off of him like two years ago. Okay. So for me, in knowing the contract situation with him, I thought this was the perfect time. 
I had wanted a Herschel Walker kind of deal. And in the end, I feel like as a fan of the Seahawks, I got the Herschel Walker deal and I got them to move off of Russell Wilson. And I'm happy that my GM once again showed that he is a very smart man. Well, some uh, GMs are more shrewd than others, aren't they? Yeah. Absolutely. And to, tell me, do you think uh, 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 Wilson is the final piece to a championship puzzle for the Broncos, buddy? Um, I don't think he's that guy. But I understand why the Broncos did it. I don't blame them for doing it because they feel like they have a very good football team. They feel like they're a quarterback away. And I've always said that that's the one piece that Elway has been searching for. You know, ever since, you know, Peyton Manning, he's, he's been looking for that quarterback. And I don't blame him for making a move. It is definitely an upgrade. Now, yes, it is an upgrade getting Russell Wilson. Do I think he's that guy to take them over the top? No, I don't think so. And what did you make of the rest of their moves this offseason in free agency, Bonnie? Um, I like some of the moves. I think uh, Gregory was probably their biggest move, um, bringing, bringing in another pass rusher to go with Chubbs. Um, that division right now is stacked with quarterbacks. It's an arms race. You know, guys are going to be throwing the football all over the place. You have to be able defensively to slow Patrick Mahomes and, you know, Justin Herbert and, and Derek Carr, slow these guys down. So I think the pass rusher getting help there was big for them. And tell me, do you have a problem with the amount of compensation they gave up to acquire Wilson? No, I don't, because I firmly believe, if you think and believe that that quarterback is your guy, it doesn't matter what you give up to get him, because if you win the Super Bowl, who cares how much you gave up? You know, that's the whole point, winning the Super Bowl. And, the, you know, the, the uh, Bronco brass feel like, He's the missing piece to getting to the Super Bowl and winning it. So, you know, whatever you had to do to get him is, is fair game. And I, I don't need to tell you, brother, that uh, all of the AFC West games, could, could you could make a case that could be all on national television this year. Yeah, yes. So tell me, uh, what did you think of the rest of the AFC West and where uh, the Broncos fit in, buddy? Um, I think it's stacked. It's going to be really exciting every single week when those teams play. You're going to have Mahomes against Wilson. Derek Carr is no slouch either. Um, where I would put the Broncos right now, I got to put them third or fourth in the division, honestly, because I still think Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs will be at the top. You know, Patrick Mahomes and Andy Reid, they mesh well together. They've done this before. I love. Justin Herbert, the quarterback for um, Los Angeles uh, Chargers. I think he has some of the best talent in the league. Um, the Chargers kind of seem to always shoot themselves in the foot. Um, they missed the playoffs last year by a game. Um, but now they got Khalil Mack. If Bosa can stay healthy, they're going to be a problem. Uh, defensively, you know, they have not stepped up to the plate yet. They've had injuries two years ago. They, they kind of underachieved last year. I expect them to take a jump. Um, Denver, not Denver, but the Raiders, you know, you know, Carr is not a bum, and now you give him uh, Devontae, Devontae Adams. Adams yeah. And, and, and the, the guy that no one really talks about, and I call him the, a poor man's Cooper Cup, is um, that's the other receiver. His name is escaping. I was talking about Hunt, him early, Hunter early. Renfro. Yeah. Hunter Hunt. Renfro, that guy. He's a, he's a problem. And if Waller can stay healthy, he has three legit weapons to throw the ball to. Um, when I look at the Broncos, my, my question with the Broncos is this. Russell Wilson left Seattle, not because they weren't winning, because he was there for 10 years. Maybe he missed the playoffs twice. So eight years he went to the playoffs. Um, he left because he wants to throw the football. It's about him right now. He talks about his legacy. He loved Drew Brees. He wants to be like Aaron Rodgers. He wants to be like Tom Brady. He wants to throw the ball. Now, he goes to Denver. You got a new head coach who's never been a head coach before. So we don't know 
what Hackett's going to be as a head coach. We know what he is as an OC, offensive coordinator. So now, are you going to allow Russell to throw the ball 30 to 35 times a game? Because he couldn't do that in Seattle. He tried to twist Seattle's arm. Seattle wasn't falling for it. Are you going to let him throw the ball that much and negate your running game? Because they got a good running back, you know, Williams, that doesn't really get tackled. Or you're going to let him do what he basically did in Seattle, hand the ball off, play action pass, and take his shots. I think that's the best thing for the Broncos to do. But I also know that's not what Russell wants to do. And that's, that's your crossroads right there. Because I think if you give Russell Wilson volume, which is 30 to 35 throws a game, it's not going to be good for him. And it's not going to be good for that team. That's just my opinion. You, well, that, that's why I wanted you on to give your opinion. Uh, I'm telling you, what is what did you take away from his initial uh, press conference when, when the team introduced him? Did anything uh, stick out to your body? Uh, no, because I've learned over the 10 years of him in Seattle, Russell Wilson is a walking cliche. He gives you a lot of cliches. Honestly, to me, he doesn't really give you much. Um, when he's talking, um, but he says all the right things. You know, I think he's a good guy. He's great off the field for the most part. He's going to say all the right stuff. You know, he's kind of grown into a leader because when he was first in Seattle, I remember there were times when Doug Baldwin would tell him, you lead, we follow. And now he's, you know, 10 years in, he's matured. He is a leader. He's going to motivate guys. He's going to be the first one in, last guy to leave. He's, you're already seeing He's out there throwing to his wide receivers, you know, getting guys ready, trying to get acclimated. That's what he's going to do. Um, but there's certain things on the football field that I feel that he has not gotten better at in 10 years. And I think it's those things that at 33 now, as he's getting older and he's not as quick as he was before to get away from trouble, I think that that's what's going to start to rear its head. Um, it's going to be very interesting to see how Hackett, head coach, you know, plays this thing with him. Because I know what Russell wants to do, and I, I have an idea of what is best for the Broncos to do, and I don't see how those two are going to mesh. Yeah, just a quick question on Nathaniel Hackett for you. Obviously, mm -hmm. uh, uh, the Broncos went with Vic Fangio, the, right. the, the last uh, coach they hired, and they went with another a uh, first-time head coach. So are you uh, surprised they went in this direction? And what do you think Hackett can bring to the table? Well, hey, the guy has coached with a Hall of Famer in Aaron Rodgers, you know? So he has that kind of experience. You can't take that away from him. You know, dealing with Aaron Rodgers, seeing how Aaron Rodgers um, plays. I personally like the idea of offensive head coach, minded coach with a quarterback. You know, it's not too often that you get a Pete Carroll and that actually works. Pete Carroll's a defensive coach. Um, but I like the idea with an offensive mining coach. Like, even in this year, you got another head coach with the Raiders and um, Josh McDaniel, the Patriots for years. He's an mm -hmm. offensive mining coach. You know, I like, I like, you know, pairing those guys together, the quarterback with the offensive mining coach. So, in that regard, I think there's going to be some, some things that Hackett has seen that he has used with Aaron Rodgers, that he's going to try to implement with Wilson. Um, but you have to understand that Wilson and Aaron Rodgers are not the same. They're two different quarterbacks. But I think, you know, Vangio was a defensive coach. It wasn't working. He wasn't really successful there. So I, I actually like the Hackett, Nathaniel Hackett higher. I think it's a step in the right direction. Yeah, my final uh... – a Broncos question for you has to do with, you know, the, uh, they've put a lot of uh, ammunition into this and they've sort of pushed their uh, chips at the center of the table for this move. So how do you, how do you think this ends and, and positively uh, for the Broncos over the long term? Well, it's, you know, it's going to be a battle. Because if you look at that AFC, the division is stacked. You mm -hmm. still have Buffalo in the East. You have Tennessee was in the playoffs last year. I've always felt that the Indianapolis Colts are playoff ready. They're, they were a quarterback away. I honestly feel with getting Matt Ryan kind of stabilizes them. 
they're going to be there. You figure the Ravens will be around. The Bengals went to the Super Bowl. Everybody can't get into the playoffs. It's going to be a dog fight. Um, you know, you know, with with Denver, with the moves that they made, I don't blame them for the moves. It was moves that they had to make. The same thing the Rams have done. You push all your chips to the middle of the table. You take your shot. That's what they're doing right now. So I commend them for that. Um, I just wonder. I just don't feel that Wilson is that guy to get them over the top. I still like Mahomes better. I still like uh, Justin Herbert better. I like the Chiefs team as a whole. Um, it's going to be interesting to see. I, I, uh, and then the other problem is that no one's talking about is that Russell has two years on his deal. After this year, he's coming to the table. His agent is going to come sit down and want a new contract. What are you paying him? If you're the Broncos, you traded everything for him. You have to pay him. Now, let's look at the quarterback market. What are quarterbacks getting right now? What is Aaron Rodgers getting? What is Patrick Mahomes getting? They're getting like $50 million a year. They're getting close to that kind of number. Wilson is going to want Mahomes' money. He's going to want Aaron Rodgers' money. And he's coming to the table. He's not waiting for 23. He's coming after 22. So how he plays this year, if, he, if you guys, if, if Denver doesn't make the playoffs, which is possible with the way AFC is stacked, mm -hmm. what is the front office of Denver going to do? Because now the expectations are high. They expect Russell Wilson, he's the Messiah, lead us to the promised land, get us to the playoffs, get us to the Super Bowl. If that doesn't happen, what are you paying him? Can you justify giving him a huge – forget about Watson in Cleveland. He just shattered the market, you know, and Watson hasn't been to a Super Bowl. I Even though I think Watson's a better quarterback than Russell, in my opinion. But um, it's going to be really interesting after this year because, you know, this is not over. Denver's going to have to make some decisions – after this season. Now, if they win the Super Bowl, you probably give you probably give Russell Wilson a blank check and tell him he can write whatever he would, he wants in, in in the check. But um, yeah. that's yet to be seen. Yeah, absolutely. And you know what the NFL draft is about a week and a half away. So tell me what are what are you most looking forward to seeing uh play out during the draft, bud? Well, you know, um they gave up a bunch of draft picks. Um I think they could Maybe get a piece or two to show up the offensive line. Um, maybe get some linebackers in there that kind of help them out. But uh, when you have put all this money into Russell Wilson and him being the guy, you want to make sure that you protect him. So you get him. You got some good weapons at wide receiver, but you have to get him some offensive linemen to kind of keep him protected. Like I said, he's 33 now, going on 34. He doesn't move like he used to. I've seen a couple of times where those 380-pound linemen have kind of got to him before he can get to the corner. Um, so you want to definitely protect him and you work it through the draft. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and tell me, the what, if people want to uh, get connected with you or follow the work you do, buddy, what's the best way they, uh, they can do that? Um, you can hit me up on Twitter, at Derwin, D-E-R-W-I-N, last name Worrell, W O. R R E L L. That's probably the best way to catch up with me. Fantastic. Well, you know, uh, do, do we uh, uh, feel, uh, we share a mutual uh, passion uh, for football, and I really want to thank you for spending a few minutes with me talking about the addition to uh, uh, Russell Wilson to the Broncos. Your time on my behalf and work in the space party is most appreciated, and I want to thank you for being here today. Well, thank you for having me, and let's do it again sometime.